Right now at six, a battle over reproductive rights. We already know that a significant number of us feel that now is the time and this is the moment. Democrats have the votes necessary to protect freedom of choice. Republicans aren't going down easy. I see us running the distance. I, I suspect that those in the media who want to stay here should find themselves a pillow. Housing is becoming anything but affordable in the metro. It's a basic necessity that human beings need to survive. City leaders are offering up their ideas. We have an in-depth 360 look at whether they're feasible. They're trying to kind of force a, a square peg into a round hole. Thank you for joining us for Denver 7 News at 6. I'm Jessica Porter. And I'm Jason Grenauer. On the same day, Texas abortion clinics deemed their challenge of their state's abortion bill effectively over. Colorado lawmakers are preparing for another long night of debate. Democrats say they're trying to protect a person's fundamental right to reproductive choice. Denver 7's Megan Lopez joins us live now. Megan, laws like this one in Texas are the reason why our state is taking this issue up. Yeah, that's right, Jessica and Jason, particularly what's happening in the color uh, in the U.S. Supreme Court, the Dobbs versus Jackson's Women Health Organization. The oral arguments were heard for that in December and a ruling is expected really this summer, sometime maybe even in June. So ahead of all of that and because of the fear that Roe versus Wade could be overturned because of the conservative slant of the U.S. Supreme Court, Colorado lawmakers, Colorado Democrats say this bill is necessary. So let's talk quickly about what it does. The bill states that everyone has a right to use or refuse contraception, that abortions are legal in Colorado, and that it's illegal to prosecute or to punish someone who seeks one of these. Megan, beyond the philosophical arguments, are there other reasons Republicans are opposed to this? The philosophical arguments are obviously going to be the very big ones, Jessica, that we're certainly hearing quite a bit about today in the debates. But beyond that, what I'm hearing from Republicans is that this is the wrong solution for the issue and that we should be looking at socioeconomic solutions to help pregnant people who maybe say that they can't afford babies, for instance. They also worry about parental notification laws and if this bill is going to affect that. And they say that this should be decided by the voters or by local governments and not by lawmakers. But most importantly, they say that this bill puts really no guardrails whatsoever around abortion when it comes to how far along a woman uh, or a pregnant person can be in their pregnancy when seeking an abortion or the reasons behind that abortion. Here's State Representative Stephanie Luck talking about that. What this bill is saying as, uh, is that it's okay to abort a child because they're the wrong sex, because they have a disability, because they're the wrong race. That's not, that's not life to me, that's not thriving, that's not advancing the values that I think Coloradans support. So she considers this bill to be extreme and says that it will open up the state to lawsuits. And she says, more importantly, it doesn't help women in the right way and it doesn't help the state to thrive. Democrats obviously have a very different opinion on that. Of course, and are Democrats willing to budge on the bill or some of its language at all? Yeah, I spoke with some of the Democrat uh, prime co-sponsors today of this bill, and they say that they've spent a lot of time crafting it in a way that they don't really think needs very many amendments. But that being said, Representative Meg Froelich, one of the bill's co-sponsors, told me that she's always willing to listen. She stayed until 4 a.m. during that committee debate that happened on Wednesday, and she says she'll be here all night tonight listening to this and seeing if there's really anything that they might be willing to pass. Now, that being said, I would say that there have been 10 different amendments that have been proposed at this point in the debate and none of them have passed. But again, they say that they're willing to listen. So here's Representative Meg Froelich. We'll go into the night and we'll hear all sorts of arguments about why this isn't the answer. But we already know that a significant number of us feel that now is the time and this is the moment and this is the bill. And at the end of the day, what Representative Froelich says is that Coloradans have proven time and again that this is what they want because of how they voted on previous ballot measures. So what we're expecting tonight is a very long night with a debate, but we are expecting to see this bill pass in the House. And if it does pass and it does move on, we're expecting some other very long, late nights at the Colorado State Capitol. I'm live. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. It's going to be a long night. Thank you, Megan.